students in the today's session we are going to discuss uh, sympathetics now sympathetics are the anti adrenergic drugs these are the drugs that bind to adrenergic receptors that is alpha and or beta receptors and these drugs that is the sympathetics these drugs block the receptors that is alpha and or beta receptors and by blocking these receptors they prevent the action of adrenaline and the related drugs so sympathetic drugs are those drugs uh, that prevent or antagonize the actions of adrenaline and the related adrenergic drugs and therefore these sympathetic they are also called as anti adrenergic drugs now sympathetic or the anti adrenergic drugs are of two types if they block the alpha receptors they are called as alpha blockers and if they block the beta receptors they are called as the beta blockers or beta adrenergic antagonist now in the today's session we are going to emphasize on beta adrenergic blockers now beta adrenergic blockers or the beta adrenergic antagonist are those drugs that block beta receptors uh, they show affinity for beta receptors that is capability of binding to the beta receptors but no efficacy once they have bounded themselves with the beta receptors they are not capable of showing their own pharmacological action what they do is this that they block or they prevent the action of adrenaline and or the other adrenergic drugs so therefore they have they show no no efficacy but they antagonize the action of adren adrenaline and other related drugs now coming to the classification of beta blockers first generation beta blockers uh, these are the older uh, molecules older drugs and these first generation beta blockers they are the non selective now as we all know that the beta receptors are of three types beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 so these first generation non selective older uh, beta blockers they block uh, beta 1 beta 2 as well as beta 3 receptors examples are propranolol timolol so sotalol pendolol uh, now coming to the second generation second generation uh, beta blockers are those drugs that selectively block beta 1 receptors and by uh, by blocking the beta 1 receptors they produces uh, they produce fall in the heart rate uh, they produce fall in the force of contraction of uh, cardiac muscles and they cause uh, reduction in the cardiac output uh, reduction in the workload and therefore these drugs are used in the treatment of hypertension they are also found to be useful in the treatment of congestive heart failure and, and also in the uh, cardio uh, cardiac problems cardiac diseases like angina examples are metoprolol atenolol acetabutolol bisoprolol asmolol now coming to the third generation beta blockers uh, these are the beta blockers uh, which apart from blocking the uh, beta receptors also show additional vasodilator property that means they are capable of dilating the blood vessels now in the third generation beta blockers we have non selective beta blockers with the vasodilator property as well as selective beta blockers with the vasodilator property now non selective beta blockers uh, example is the carvedilol carvedilol blocks uh, beta 1 beta 2 and it additionally blocks alpha 1 receptor and because of the blockage of alpha 1 receptors it produces additional vasodilation uh, another uh, beta blocker third generation non selective beta blocker is uh, labetalol it also blocks uh, beta 1 beta 2 apart from that it also it also blocks the uh, alpha 1 receptor and by blocking the alpha 1 receptor it produces uh, vasodilation uh then under the third generation uh, the second subcategory is of uh, selective beta blockers selective beta blockers with additional vasodilator property example is uh, nebulolol nebulolol is a beta 1 selective blocker but apart from uh, blocking the beta 1 receptor it also causes release of uh, nitric oxide from the endothelial cells and release of nitric oxide from the endothelial cells Uh, results in vasodilation another example is a beta zolol beta zolol uh, also selectively blocks beta 1 receptor but apart from blocking the beta 1 receptors uh, this drug is a, blocks a calcium channel 
and because of the blockage of the calcium channels there is dilation of blood vessels so this is a classification of beta blockers now we'll study uh, different generations one by one now first we are going to discuss first generation beta adrenergic blockers examples are propranolol timolol sotalol etc now pharmacological actions of uh, non selective beta blockers first effect on the cardiovascular system uh, effect of uh, non selective beta blockers on heart on the heart are present beta 1 receptors and blockage of beta 1 receptors uh, produces fall in the heart rate there is a reduction in the force of co contraction of cardiac muscles and because of these two factors uh, there is reduction in the cardiac load on the heart uh, that is there is reduction in the cardiac work and uh, since there is reduction in the cardiac work there is a reduction in the oxygen consumption of myocardial tissue and uh, uh, because of this these drugs are found to be useful in the treatment of angina they are also useful in the treatment of congestive heart failure and uh, apart from this uh, fall in the heart rate and fall in the force of contraction of cardiac muscles reduces the cardiac output. Now we all know that blood pressure is equal to cardiac output into peripheral resistance and because these drugs they reduce the cardiac output they reduce the blood pressure and therefore uh, these drugs are also used in the treatment of hypertension. Apart from these, uh, these drugs they also reduce uh, AV conduction that is AV conduction is delayed. Uh, they reduce automaticity they are also found to be useful in the treatment of arrhythmias now coming to the effect on blood vessels on the blood vessels are present uh, beta 2 receptors and uh, blockage of beta 2 receptors uh, produces uh, vasoconstriction and because of vasoconstriction there is increase in the total peripheral resistance and increase in the total peripheral resistance increases the blood pressure on the other hand, as we have already discussed the effect on heart, uh, these drugs they reduce cardiac output because of the blockage of beta 1 receptors which are found to be present on heart. And the fall in the cardiac output reduces the blood pressure. So on one hand they are increasing the blood pressure and on the other side they are reducing the blood pressure. But uh, with continued treatment, chronically uh, reduced cardiac output also reduces the total peripheral resistance. So there is reduction in the cardiac output and there is also reduction in the peripheral resistance when the treatment is continued and we know blood pressure is equal to cardiac output into peripheral resistance and therefore uh, fall in both these two parameters causes fall in the systolic as well as fall in the diastolic blood pressure apart from this there is uh, found to be reduction in the release of renin from the kidney and this also reduces the blood pressure so therefore these type of drugs are used in the treatment of hypertension Beta blockers suppress uh, extrasystoles and they also suppress uh, or uh, uh, reduce the incidences of uh, tachycardia especially during anesthesia uh, which is uh, and uh, digital is induced uh, this tachycardia and therefore they are found to be useful in the treatment of arrhythmias. Now coming to the respiratory tract. Uh, on the respiratory tract are present the beta 2 receptors and the uh, blockage of these beta 2 receptors uh, results in bronchoconstriction and therefore these non-selective beta blockers they are not recommended in patients with asthma or uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that is COPD because these non-selective beta blockers as they are blocking beta 2 receptors it produce bronchoconstriction. The effect on eye these non-selective beta blockers, uh, they produce uh, redu reduction in the secretion of aqueous humor. Uh, they reduce the intraocular pressure, uh, pressure or the intraocular tension. And therefore, these drugs, that is the beta blockers, they are found to be useful in the treatment of glaucoma. Coming to the effect on the central nervous system, uh, propranolol is lipophilic. And therefore, it uh, penetrates the brain easily. And it is found to be... Uh, the most effective drug for the treatment of chronic uh, for the chronic profile prophylaxis of migraine it is a very useful drug for the chronic prophylaxis of the migraine that is it is a 
uh, useful for the prevention of migraine. Then uh, next pharmacological effect, local anesthetic effect. Uh, Propranolol is a potent local anesthetic. It is not used clinically as it causes irritation at the injected site. Now second generation beta blockers. These are the cardioselective beta blockers because they block the beta 1 receptors which are found to be present on heart. Uh, for example, metoprolol, atenolol, asmolol. And uh, by blocking beta 1 receptors which are found to be present on heart, these drugs they reduce heart rate. They reduce the force of contraction of uh, cardiac muscles. And therefore, these drugs are found to reduce the workload of the heart. And therefore, they are useful in the treatment of uh, congestive heart failure. They are also used in the treatment of angina and since they reduce the cardiac output as they reduce the heart rate they're also used in the treatment of hypertension so the second generation beta blockers they are more potent and selective in blocking the beta 1 receptors and treatment they're used in the treatment of congestive heart failure angina and they also reduce the blood pressure so they're useful in the treatment of hypertension and uh, since they are not blocking the beta 2 receptors, uh, there are highly reduced chances of these drugs to cause bronchoconstriction. So unlike the non-selective beta blockers, cardioselective beta blockers, uh, they do not produce bronchoconstriction. Coming to the third generation beta blockers, as we have already discussed, uh, these third generation beta blockers are of uh, two types. Non-selective beta blockers with additional vasodilator property and selective beta blockers, selective beta blockers with additional vasodilator property. Now, under the third generation beta blockers, non-selective, we have the example of carvedilol. Carvedilol is non-selective and therefore it blocks beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. And apart from that, it blocks the alpha 1 receptors. It blocks the alpha 1 receptors. And by blocking the alpha-1 receptors, it produces additional vasodilator property. Uh, it also shows antioxidant effect and uh, it is found to be useful in the treatment of hypertension. It is cardioprotective in congestive heart failure as it, as it reduces the workload on the heart. Another drug uh, which is a non-selective beta blocker and which also shows uh, vasodilator property is labitalol. Labitalol uh, blocks the beta-1 receptors, beta-2 receptors and it also blocks the alpha-1 receptors because of which it produces vasodilation. It is a moderately potent hypotensive. Coming to the third generation beta blockers, beta blockers that are selective and possess additional vasodilator property. Uh, first example of, is of uh, Nabivolol. Nabivolol is highly selective beta-1 blocker. It also shows antioxidant effect. It produces vasodilation by the release of nitric oxide from endothelial cell. Nitric oxide is also called as endothelium derived relaxing factor. So nebivalol induces the uh, release of nitric oxide from the endothelial cells and because of the release of nitric oxide it produces a vasodilation. Indication it is used in the treatment of hypertension and congestive heart failure. Another example of a selective third generation beta blocker is the bitoxolol. Bitoxolol is highly selective beta 1 blocker. Uh, it produces additional vasodilation by blocking the calcium channels of the blood vessels and uh, it reduces the intraocular pressure. Uh, bitoxolol is useful in the treatment of hypertension, congestive heart failure and it is also useful in the treatment of glaucoma as it uh, reduces the intraocular pressure. So this is the, uh, about the different types of beta blockers. Uh, now uh, we'll talk about the, we'll discuss the intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. These, uh, some of these sympatholytic agents, uh, some of these beta blockers, uh, they possess intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. That means uh, they are capable of activating beta 1 and or beta 2 receptors submaximally. Examples are the pindolol, Celiprolol, acibutol, these are the beta blockers that apart from blocking the beta receptors, they also activate beta 1 and or beta 2 receptors submaximally. 
and these uh, drugs with the intrinsic sympathomimetic activities are found to be beneficial in patients with pre-existing bradycardia or the heart block uh, since these drugs are capable of activating beta receptors sub maximally now we will uh, summarize therapeutic uses of beta blockers first they are useful in the treatment of hypertension as they reduce the cardiac output uh, they are found to be useful in the treatment of angina pectoris as they reduce the workload on heart uh, they are found to be useful in cardiac arrhythmia since they reduce the automaticity apart from these indications uh, these beta blockers are found to be useful in myocardial infarction uh, first in the secondary profile excess of myocardial infarction that is a uh, secondary prevention of myocardial infarction uh, that is in those patients who had already suffered one attack of myocardial infarction they uh, are used for the prevention of second attack beta blockers are found to reduce mortality uh, by about 20 percent by preventing reinfarction and uh, uh, by preventing the ventricular fibrillation that is a type of arrhythmia and uh, these beta blockers, uh, they also protect the uh, uh, myocardium. Uh, they, therefore, they are used uh, uh, as the myocardial salvage. Uh, they protect the myocardial tissue from further damage. Administered within 4 to 6 hours of attack, beta blockers, they limit the size of infarct. Uh, that means they limit the size of uh, cardiac cells uh, that have been injured. Uh, they also prevent arrhythmia and this we have already discussed in detail uh, why they are useful in the treatment of uh, congestive heart failure and how they retard the progression of congestive heart failure because they reduce the workload on the heart uh, migraine again propranolol it is uh, the most effective drug of uh, choice for the chronic prophylaxis of migraine and uh, um, some uh, drugs are also used in the treatment of glaucoma as they reduce the uh, intraocular pressure. So uh, this is all about the um, beta blockers, their classification, uh, their uh, pharmacological actions and uh, therapeutic uses.